The drone world has been buzzing lately, and now the rumors are over. The DJI NEO 2 is officially confirmed. It just passed through FCC approval, which is the last big step before any wireless product can launch in the United States. For most gadgets, this is just a formality. But for drones, it's a clear sign that the release is getting close. In other words, the NEO 2 isn't just an idea anymore, it's almost ready to land in stores. Dot for those who are new to this series, the original DJI NEO was a surprise hit. It became a favorite for travel vloggers, casual hobbyists, and anyone who wanted pro-looking aerial shots without the stress of learning complicated drone controls. The secret to its success was simple. It was tiny, lightweight, and still powerful enough to shoot stable, good-looking footage. You could literally hold it in your palm, toss it in a backpack, and take it anywhere. Now, the NEO 2 is here to build on that winning formula. DJI hasn't tried to reinvent the wheel, but they have made small, meaningful upgrades that could make a big difference in everyday use. One of the most important changes is in the battery. The NEO 2 comes with a 1606 mA battery, compared to the original S, 1435 mAh per hour. That's about a 10 to 12% increase in capacity. It might sound small, but in the drone world, a little extra juice goes a long way. Under normal flying conditions, this upgrade means around 20 minutes of airtime. That's two or three more minutes than the first model. If you've ever tried capturing a perfect sunset shot or sweeping over a scenic coastline, you know those extra minutes can be the difference between finishing your vision or having to land early. For creators, it means fewer breaks, more location coverage, and a smoother shooting flow without swapping batteries in the middle of a scene, the design philosophy hasn't changed much. And that's a good thing. The NEO 2 stays at just 100 grams keeping it well below the FAA's 250 gram registration limit. That means you can fly it in the US without going through registration, paperwork or paying extra fees. For travelers, that's a huge plus. You can fly legally in more places, pack it in your carry-on without taking up much space, and avoid the stress of navigating strict drone laws in foreign cities, even though it's small and light, the NEO 2 is still packed with features that make it friendly for beginners, yet capable enough for serious creators. Expect the same full propeller guards, easy palm takeoff and landing, and DJI's quickshot AI flight modes. These modes are especially useful, they let the drone automatically perform smooth orbit shots, cinematic pans, or dramatic pull-away. Dronies without you having to master tricky manual controls. You just choose the mode, and the drone does the work, giving you footage that looks like it came from a professional travel film. For vloggers and YouTubers, this is where the Neo 2 really shines. Drone footage isn't just about looking cool. It's a storytelling tool. Those extra battery minutes mean more establishing shots, more smooth transitions, and more chances to experiment with angles you couldn't get before. And remember, this is still a sub 250G drone capable of shooting 4000 video at 30 frames per second. That combination of portability and quality is rare at this price point. Speaking of price, if DJI can keep it close to the original NEO's $199 launch price, the NEO 2 could stay one of the most affordable ways to get into high quality aerial filming that's especially important for beginners or creators on a budget who want pro-level results without investing in a bigger, more expensive drone. Like the miniseries. Of course, FCC approval doesn't guarantee smooth sailing. Other drones like the Mavic 4 Pro have faced customs delays and import hurdles. While there's no sign yet that the NEO 2 will run into those issues, it's something to keep in mind if you plan to buy right after launch. So far, there's no sign of a radical redesign. We're not seeing a brand new gimbal system, groundbreaking, sensors, or major changes in build materials, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It shows DJI is confident in the original NEO's design, and instead of overhauling it, they're focusing on making it more practical for daily use. Dot competition is heating up in the ultralight drone market, with rivals like the Rise Tello, Hubs and Zeno Mini Say, and even DJI's own miniseries pushing strong features and small packages. But the NEO 2 is carving out its own niche, ultra portable, easy to fly, budget for friendly, and still capable of shooting beautiful 4K video. That makes it ideal for the grab-and-go creator crowd, people who want to fly, shoot, and share without the complexity of mastering advanced flight systems. If DJI follows its usual playbook, the Neo 2 could land in late 2025, right in time for the holiday shopping season. That's a smart move. An affordable, palm-sized drone is the kind of gift that appeals to tech lovers, travelers, and aspiring filmmakers alike. We'll likely see teasers in the coming months, followed by a full reveal and pre-orders leading into October or November. For now, the NEO 2 is shaping up to be one of the most creator-friendly drones of the year. It's not a revolution, but with more flight time, extreme portability, and ease of use at a wallet-friendly price. It could be the perfect choice for anyone who wants to start their aerial photography journey or level up their content without breaking the bank. Let's start with how it compares to DJI's own lineup. The Mini 3 and Mini 4 Pro are technically more advanced. They have better obstacle avoidance, 
more flight modes, and longer battery life. But they also cost significantly, more often two or three times the expected price of the Neo 2. For many casual flyers, that's overkill. They don't need advanced tracking features or pro-grade sensors. They just want something that's fun, easy to use, and capable of producing clean 4K footage for social media or personal projects. That's exactly where the Neo 2 slots in, when we compare it to budget competitors like the Rise Tello or Hub Sun Xeno Mini say. The Neo 2 seems to win on polish and user experience. Rise offers a great starter drone, but it can't match DJI's camera stabilization or intelligent flight modes. Hubson's Mini Say comes close, but DJI's software ecosystem like the Fly app and smooth integration with editing tools gives it an edge. In short, the Neo 2 is less about being the most advanced drone and more about being the most enjoyable one to actually fly and create with. Now let's think about the people who will actually use it. For travel vloggers, the Neo 2's lightweight means you can take it anywhere without worrying about baggage space or weight limits. You can set it up quickly, get your aerial shots, and pack it away in minutes. If you're moving through multiple locations in a day, those minutes saved really matter. And since you don't need registration in many countries for sub 2 g drones, the Neo 2 becomes a true grab-and-go solution for international trips. For lifestyle content creators, the ones filming city walks, street food tours, or behind the scenes videos, the Neo 2 adds a level of variety to your visuals. You can start your video with a sweeping aerial shot of the city skyline, transition into your ground level storytelling, and instantly boost the production quality without spending hours on setup. The quick shot AI modes are perfect here because they create cinematic shots automatically. Even if you're not an expert pilot, event filmmakers like those shooting weddings or festivals will appreciate the extra flight time. In these settings, moments happen quickly. A couple's first dance or a performer's big stage moment won't wait for you to swap a battery. That extra two or three minutes could mean capturing the exact shot that makes the final cut perfect. Of course, there's another layer to why DJI is releasing the Neo 2 now. Market positioning. The drone industry is under pressure from multiple directions, governments are tightening regulations, competitors are getting better, and consumer expectations are rising. By refreshing the Neo with practical upgrades instead of an expensive overhaul, DJI keeps the product line relevant without alienating budget-conscious buyers. This also plays into DJI's long-term strategy. The Neo series acts as a gateway. Drone once someone starts with a Neo, enjoys the experience, and gains confidence flying. They're more likely to upgrade to a Mini or even a Mavic in the future. It's a low-risk entry point for new customers that can lead to bigger sales. Down the line, looking ahead, DJI will need to navigate supply chain and regulatory challenges. The FCC approval means the Neo 2 is cleared for the US, but import rules and international restrictions could still slow things down. If DJI can launch without delays, they can capitalize on the holiday shopping rush. If not, there's a chance. Competitors could grab some of the attention, especially if they offer similar specs at similar prices. Still, DJI has one major advantage, brand trust. People know that when they buy a DJI drone, they're getting a product that's been tested, refined, and supported with regular updates. This matters a lot in the budget space, where many cheap drones promise a lot but deliver very little. The Neo 2 may not be the most powerful or the flashiest, but it's likely to be one of the most dependable in its category. If we step back, the Neo 2 isn't trying to compete in the high-end drone race. It's not here to dethrone the Mini. For Pro or Challenge the Outhole Evo Nano Plus. Instead, it's targeting the people who care about simplicity, portability, and price. It's made for those who'd rather spend time creating content than reading a thick user manual. And that's a smart move, because in the current content-driven world, accessibility often beats raw power. 